You should have. Why haven't you not? If you haven't subscribed, I just made that up for the video. I don't have a wife. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. But whatever. Nobody's fact checking this. Well, my name is Ryan Schneider. I am the flying trapeze acrobat in Alegria. You already know that, right? Because you've been watching the videos. So I started flying trapeze at a trapeze school. Surprisingly, there are actually trapeze schools around the world. And it was in Los Angeles where I just kind of stumbled across it. It was uh, standing there right in front of the restaurant I was working at. And I was doing some stunt work while I was doing some acting in LA. And uh, one of the stunt buddies suggested I take a class. So I took a trapeze class and I got hooked immediately. Uh, I was 26 years old. It was later in life when I decided to try doing acrobatics. And uh, that was my first trapeze lesson. So after a few classes, they offered me a job to start working there. And I didn't really know what I was doing, but I took the job anyway. And uh, I knew it was a great place for me to train for free and uh, learn some new skills. So I thought it would be fun. And even on my days off, so I, so I would go there constantly. On my days off, I would go there and train. And I would try and learn everything I could from watching YouTube videos to, to asking people around that knew anything about circus or trapeze. When I saw my first circus show, I was completely inspired to change my career, complete career course. Uh, instead of acting, I just gave up the acting altogether and decided to go full-blown into circus and flying trapeze. And obviously my size, I am not built as a flyer size per se. So I, uh, I noticed that my skills were a lot better towards catching anyway. And then I could eat what I wanted to. So I focused all my, my time and energy into learning the skills of catching on the flying trapeze. So obviously with flying trapeze, you have a flyer who does all the tricks and the acrobatics in the air. And you have the catcher on the other side who catches them as they uh, finish. And uh, I thought my skills would be better off suited for that. So I spent the next several years learning all the things I needed to do to become a professional trapeze catcher. I got my first job with Ringling Brothers Circus in the United States. Toured for about a year and a half with them before getting my uh, first full contract as a flying trapeze catcher in a show in Japan. I worked in that show for four years. Um, it was a little different style of trapeze because we have a swinging cradle, which is an aluminum cradle rather than on cables. And it had a different element where we had a catcher standing above me as a catcher. So um, we would do different tricks with that where we'd take the flyer, instead of doing the traditional catch and return, take the flyer, catch him, and then throw him to the other catcher above, have them fly back down to me, and then return them. So there was a lot of different elements and different levels in the act, which was really interesting and really new for me to learn. That was a lot of fun. I did that for four years. Met my uh, future wife there. My next job was a show in Mexico. The next job was Alegria, Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil called me. Initially, it called me before the pandemic to catch the high bar act because I had the swinging cradle experience. And then when the pandemic happened and they replaced that high bar act with flying trapeze, surprisingly, I got a call to do the flying trapeze catching as well. So uh, that's how I ended up here in Alegria. And it's, it's been a fun two years so far. In total, I've been doing flying trapeze for over 15 years. Uh, as a professional, about eight. Four different circuses, but eight or so different jobs. I've done eight different professional jobs as an acrobat. You know, one of the common questions I get a lot is, how many injuries have I had or what kind of injuries I've had. This flying trapeze is a very dynamic, physical activity. And uh, I've been fortunate through my career, I have never missed a show due to an injury. In trapeze, you're always dealing with some kind of soreness uh, because our bodies aren't naturally made to hang from bars and swing around in the air. We're not monkeys, although some people would argue that we came from monkeys. But yeah, I've been fortunate that I haven't had too many injuries in my career. Um, I've had some muscle strains. As a trapeze artist, you're always dealing with some kind of physical pain or injury, but it's how you manage it and whether or not it's chronic. And again, I've been fortunate enough to like be very durable in my career. I also do a lot of extra exercise and weightlifting to supplement that I'm using my physical body as my tool for my work job. But the biggest challenge I've had a couple times through my career already has been experiencing vertigo. I experienced vertigo twice now in my career which is an interesting thing because it's not something that you can, it's hard to prepare for it and it's hard to prepare against it. But once I've had it uh, a couple different times, it's the scariest feeling when you're hanging upside down, 30 feet above the ground and everything starts becoming very dizzy all at once. Fortunately, both times that I've had it, I took the proper uh, medication and diagnosis and, and treatment and I was back working within a week. Other than that, nothing mentally has really 
stuck with me to to prevent me from keeping continuing to grow and continuing to learn and um, working with different flyers from different countries has also been another way that it's been really helping me grow and learn different uh, different ways uh, different styles of flying trapeze. I met my wife actually working in a Japanese circus six years ago. She had already been working in the circus for about four years before I started. And then after two years working together, uh, we, I finally convinced her to go on a date with me. And after a nice trip to the Osaka Aquarium and then Hooters, she decided that I was boyfriend material and uh, <laughs> then we dated. So after three years of dating, we finally got married. And um, she's also an acrobat. She's an aerialist, gymnast. Um, she does quite a few other things. And as, after we had started dating, she also learned flying trapeze and she's a phenomenal flying trapeze artist as well. So some of the most exciting things about touring with a show like Allegria is, first of all, I'm working with people who are at the highest level of what they do. Not only just the acrobats that I work with, but the technicians, the crew, the management, the artistic team. They're some of the best people at their jobs across the world. So uh, being amongst uh, the highest level people encourages you to to continue doing better and continue growing, but it also gives you opportunities to learn other things. So I've been able to learn other skills from some of the best people in the world. I've learned a fire knife, I've learned a little bunkeen, I've learned, say I've learned juggling. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to have the resources of all these amazing people on the tour that not only are talented, but they're also willing to share their skills with you and teach you what they know and, and for free. <laughs> that's, that's true. Not only that, but it's free, yeah. I've learned clowning, I've learned acting, I've learned some management skills from the stage managers. It's been pretty incredible to be able to have that opportunity. My most passionate things is providing some kind of experience to the audience. And when you do that with small shows or big shows, the feeling is always the same. But one of the nice things about working with Circus Soleil and Alegria is that you already have a brand name behind you. So there's an expectation when an audience comes to see the show that you're going to put on a high level performance. And in return, when you do give that high level performance, you get high level response as well. So people come with high expectations, but when they're fulfilled in their expectation, they totally respond with that energy and reciprocation of, of excitement and that visceral feeling that makes us so proud of what we do. If I had to give anybody advice on how to reach their goals or if there's something that they're really passionate about wanting to do, first thing is know and embrace that you're going to fail. The whole process of getting to the highest level of what you want to do or your goal is there is going to be obstacles, there is going to be struggles, there are going to be times when it doesn't feel like you're ever making any progress at all. And trust me, those are the times that you will grow the most, you will learn the most. And even when you make it to a place where you feel like you're, you're happy and you get shot down or you, you hit a wall or you feel like you're at a plateau, that's the opportunity where you need to dig in and say like, this is what I really want and continue to go for it. And nobody gets to the top of where they're at by just accepting failure. The failure is part of it, so embrace it. And once I learned that mentality of embracing the failure that you're going to experience anyway, it allowed me a whole new way to go forward and to be excited about the failure because I knew that was just the next step that was getting me closer to my goal. <laughs> if I had a million dollars or any wish, anybody can make money. There's, there's ways to make money if you just open up a book, you look on the internet, there's plenty of ways to, and you can be creative to find ways to make money. And if I had to choose between a million dollars and to have a wish, I definitely choose the wish because the million dollars I can make, I can earn it. I can figure out ways to invest to, to accumulate a million dollars, but a wish right now, my wife is pregnant and I know that being a parent is going to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest challenge that I face in life. Like I said before, I'm embracing the challenge because I know it's going to be difficult. But my only wish is that my child stays healthy as possible. I know there will be sicknesses. I know there will be injuries. I know there will be all kinds of struggles. And that's part of the life. And I accept that and I'm excited for that. But I wish me that there's not any undue or unnecessary traumas or struggles that my child or children have to face. Because if you want to follow more stuff, I do a lot of stuff on social media with TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. All of my handles are Ryan S. Acrobat, so you can follow me, subscribe on there for some awesome stuff. Some food reviews, some travel stuff, some flying treppies, Cirque du Soleil, and some really cool dynamic stuff between Japanese and American interracial relationships. So a lot of fun skits that my wife and I do together. 
Guys, make sure you follow and subscribe to Andre. He's been working his butt off to make this channel so you guys have some amazing stuff to see, to learn some stuff about our life on tour. And it's actually teaching me some really cool stuff about the different perspectives that people have here on tour as well. So make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you leave some comments so that he can get feedback on things that will be interesting in other videos for him to make for you guys. Until then, it'll be awesome. Let's do it. Let's be safe up there. One, two, three. First up!